Welcome back, Nature Encoder in Chapter 7. And we've just implemented an epidemic in a spatial simulation. And what you see here in red is a population that is 100% infected. And uh, I can reload this again. And you can see here, starting from patient zero down here, um, the population, the infection will expand, the epidemic will spread, and eventually the entire population will be infected. And that is because we don't have recovery implemented yet. So let's go ahead and do that. That's actually quite simple. In our code, right, just as a reminder, um, what we have here is this run time step function. It uh, first puts all the individuals, it copies all the values from grid over into a temp grid. Then it goes through each individual and checks whether that individual is infected, uh, whether each individual is infected. If so, it will expose its neighbors. And we have uh, just implemented this function. And then at the end, we move everything back from temp grid to grid. So what's missing here um, is not just exposing the neighbors, but after uh, neighbors have been exposed also, you know, to, you know, essentially give it a shot at recovery. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can implement it right here. And we can now simply, you know, straight away say, um, you know, try recovery. Again, I'm going to call this try recovery, just as I called the other function uh, try infection, because it re is really a trial, um, because it only happens with a certain probability. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and implement this function. So it's actually going to be uh, quite straightforward. So function try recovery. And um, what I need, of course, are the, I need to pass in the, the uh, coordinates here as well. So I and I, I. Uh, space or no space doesn't matter and I'm going to call the arguments I and I, I as well and now I basically can say um, you know with a certain chance um, that is defined in the variable gamma this individual will recover so I can say you know, following the same logic as a try infection, I can say if grid i i i uh, equals a capital I. So if the individual is infected, now technically this step is actually not necessary because I only call this function here. Uh, you know, whenever I uh, whenever this individual is infected, so I'm technically here doing a test that is unnecessary. There's always a bit of a balance. In these things because you cannot necessarily guarantee that this function will only be called on coordinates where an infected individual lives you you think that makes sense and it does uh, but you know you might come back uh, to this code in you know two months or half a year and you have forgotten about the exact details when you call this function so sometimes it's better just to have you know to, for each function to be really a sort of a standalone uh, piece of logic that doesn't depend uh, much or as little as possible on on you know previous checks and balances. So I'm just gonna you know check this here again, and then if the individual is indeed infected, I can say okay now if math random uh, is smaller than gamma, that's a recovery rate. Uh, then I'm gonna set and I'm going to be careful here to use temp grid. I'm going to set the temp grid status of this cell to recovered. And, and that's really it. That's all there is to it. Recovery is much simpler because it doesn't uh, involve other individuals. All right, let's save this and uh, go back to our uh, simulation. So let's reload this. And here, what you can see happening is the infection is spreading here at the borders, but then within the infected population, uh, suddenly, you know, the individuals turn green because they recover. And uh, this is now a typical simulation run here. And um, you can, what you can see is that at the end, of course, everybody's, in the, almost everybody is green because the infected state is not a state that will last uh, forever because there's this recovery rate. So now every individual 
is guaranteed to eventually recover, and they do. The other, the other difference uh, to the previous version is that here we have these you know, small clusters of so still susceptible individuals. Why did that happen? Well, previously it didn't happen because uh, you know each infected individual remained infectious forever. And so all of its neighbors would eventually become infected. And by this logic, all the individuals would eventually become infected. Now, this is not necessarily true anymore. An individual may become infectious, but then just as it you know, attempted to infect other individuals, it may very quickly, rarely, but sometimes this can happen, right after the first generation of you know, being infected, it can recover. And if that happens, and if that happens you know, often enough in a given you know, spatial neighborhood, then some individuals may just lock out and never get infected and then be you know, sort of protected here by, uh, by being surrounded by recovered individuals that cannot get uh, infected anymore. And therefore, these individuals cannot get infected. Another dynamic that you might sometimes see is that the infection, the epidemic, might actually die out. Now, this doesn't happen here. Uh, doesn't happen, doesn't seem to happen here either. Doesn't seem to happen here either. So let's go ahead, let's go, go over to our code and increase the, um, the recovery rate, you know, to say 0.15. So now recovery occurs much faster. So let's go back and reload. So let's see what happens here. Um, this is still an ongoing infection, but you can see that, you know, uh, now, no, it almost happened. There was one infected individual left, I think. Um, now it happened. So this, now there's a constant race between, you know, infectious individual creating new infectious individual, but then also recovering at the same time fairly quickly. And so there's this balance and there might suddenly be a situation where all the remaining infectious individual recover faster than, than they can recreate, you know, create new infectious individuals that they can pass on the infection. And if that happens, uh, the epidemic will essentially fizzle out as it has here. Sometimes this may happen so fast that you only have a tiny speck here. Sometimes, in fact, it may happen as fast as this, right? So what happened here is that patient zero recovered before it had a chance to infect other individuals. And so, you know, there are all kinds of different versions here. Uh, here, again, it, it got going, but it might, it might fizzle out now. Uh, let's just, let's just uh, take a look at this. So you can see there are only ever a few infectious individuals around. Um, now it seems to be dying out, okay. Uh, there's only a few around here, and now it's died out. But, you know, uh, overall, it's still infected about, mm, yeah, I would say, a quarter of the population. But you can see already, this is a very important take-home message beyond JavaScript. If you have an infectious disease um, that, you know, gets passed on with a certain probability, as every infectious disease does, but people also recover with a certain probability, there can be vastly different outcomes. Sometimes you just get lucky and... Um, a population actually doesn't experience an epidemic. Sometimes you get a little unluckier. Uh, it starts spreading, but it dies out quickly. So, uh, you know, this, this type of situation here, well, not here, but let's see if we can get this type of situation here, where you have a disease that gets into an individual that, you know, might come from an, another animal, another animal species, and this is actually quite common in infectious diseases that you know an infection uh, an, an infection from an animal jumps over to a human host but then the human host may recover or unfortunately actually uh, the human host may die before it has a chance to pass on uh, this disease and we think this happens all the time um, avian influenza is a good example uh, where probably infection of um, Avian influenza, so bird flu, uh, from birds, perhaps, you know, birds on, on live markets, infect uh, 
a human accidentally, but then that human doesn't pass on the infection either because uh, it simply doesn't pass it on for you know reasons of pure chance or because unfortunately the human host may die, but it doesn't pass it on. And we think this might happen, this may happen all the time. We only see it when it doesn't happen, when something like this happens or you know perhaps even a larger outbreak, then we take notice. But uh, unfortunately, the reality is that um, humans are exposed all the time to new uh, infectious diseases. And sometimes, um, you know, these, these first patients then manage to pass it on and trigger new epidemics. So uh, this is almost it. In the next video, I want to just briefly talk about a slightly different spatial uh, structure or contact structure. Uh, we now implemented a version that I think looks quite nice and that is fairly realistic where individuals would only pass on the disease, can only expose their uh, you know, local neighbors. Um, but in reality, when we think about humans, of course, we have things like long distance travels. And if I get infected, yes, I may infect my neighbors uh, in, in my hometown or in the town where I live. But of course, I may also just jump on a plane and travel to some place uh, very far away and infect either people on the plane or when I get there, infect people there. And that can have profound implications on the dynamics of disease spread. And we'll take a quick look at that in the next uh, video. So see you in the next video.